little children, Second you're not grade. seeing things. This, my little friends, is a schwa. All right, welcome back to another High School Principal Reacts. My name is Brandon, and I'm a high school principal from the U.S. state of Georgia. Today, I'm going to be looking at another episode of The Simpsons. I'm really enjoying these. Thank you to the viewers who are recommending these episodes to me. This one is called Lisa's Substitute. I have not seen it yet, so you and I are going to be reacting to it for the first time. Uh, I gather it has to do with Lisa getting a substitute teacher. That's just about all I know. Uh, if you're enjoying these videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. Without further ado, let's get into it. Did you hear about Miss Hoover? She drank a bottle of drain cleaner by mistake. Uh, I heard she fell down a well. Ah! Oh, oh, oh. oh my God, she's been dumped again. Children, I won't be staying long. I just came from the doctor and I have Lyme disease. Mm. Principal Skinner will run the class until a substitute arrives. What's Lyme disease? Uh, I'll feel that one. Lyme disease is spread by small parasites called ticks. When a diseased tick attaches itself to you and begins sucking your blood, oh. malignant spirochetes infest your bloodstream, eventually spreading to your TMI. fluid and on into the brain. The brain, oh dear God. <laughs> Come on, Elizabeth. Oh. Come on, come. Well, now, children, here we are. Open your primers to page 32. Ah, subtraction. Bart Simpson, I know it's you. No, children, Second you're not grade. seeing things. This, my little friends, is a schwa. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm guessing this is the substitute teacher. Um, yeah. And so for obvious reasons, you can't have, uh, he comes in like a cowboy with some cap guns. Uh, uh, you, yeah, you can see the age of this program that I, I don't think even then you could do that, but now certainly not. That would be a huge, huge problem. Um, but let's see what happens here. Are you the substitute? Yes, sir. Yes, I am. Are you insane? Oh, no, sir. No, no, I'm not. It's, it's my way of getting their attention. Well, right. <laughs> uh, play friendly with your new teacher, children. <laughs> Howdy. I am a Texas cowboy. The year is 1830. You youngins ask me any questions you like. Can we play kickball instead of science after lunch? Kickball? Son, there ain't no kickball in 1830. Any other questions? Shoot, it's awfully quiet on the plains here. Well, how about this? Everybody, I want to see two eyes on every single person staring right at me right now. There are three things wrong with my costume. Anybody names those three things will get my hat. <laughs> I believe I know the answer. And you know... Except for his little entrance, I kind of like this. Uh, some of the best teachers do have little ways of getting the students' attention and getting them engaged, uh, giving them a little challenge like this. Again, the cap guns uh, would be a huge, huge problem for obvious reasons. But uh, I kind, other than that, I kind of like this guy so far. Well, 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 what's your name? Lisa Simpson. Well, go ahead, Miss Simpson. Um, one. Your belt buckle says state of Texas, but Texas wasn't a state until 1845. Very good. <laughs> Two, the revolver wasn't invented until 1835. That's excellent. Three, you seem to be of the Jewish faith. Are you sure I'm Jewish? Or Italian. I'm Jewish. And there weren't any Jewish cowboys. Very good. That's excellent. And I'm also wearing a digital watch, but I'll accept that. Here you go, little lady. And for the record, there were a few Jewish cowboys, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mr. Bergstrom. Feel free to make fun of my name if you want. Two suggestions are Mr. Nerdstrom and Mr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he kind of disarms him with that. Um, this guy kind of knows what he's doing here. Boys and girls, today we will begin selecting a class president. Mm. I'm not allowed to vote, but I strongly suggest you elect Martin. Martin? As your president, I would demand a science fiction library featuring an ABC of the overlords of the genre. Asimov, Mr. Clark. Well, what about Ray Bradbury? I'm aware of his work. Thank you. <laughs> and keep watching the skies. Excellent. Excellent. Martin. Yeah, and I don't know that they really do this, have a class president for an elementary school class. Um, it's been a long time since I've done uh, any work in elementary school. So if you work at one or have this experience, please let me know. Um, but I don't think they do the, the class president. I don't know what a class president would do exactly in an elementary school class, um, but that's kind of interesting. 
If you're through with your pemmican, why don't we sing a song pemmican. about cowboys? Now, this one's not very accurate, but we can fix it up as we go along, okay? Home, home on the range. Actually, the range was far from home. It was a very desolate place where danger and disease rode tall on the saddle. <laughs> where the deer and the antelope. Law pitch. Passing notes. But unlike the efficient Indians, cowboys used only the tongue of the antelope, and they threw the rest away. <laughs> oh, where seldom is heard a discouraging <laughs> word, and the skies are not cloudy all day. Hey! Oh, she's gonna think. Did you do it? No, she did no, it. No, it wasn't me. I would never do anything like that. It was just one of those immature people who, instead of building themselves oh, up, have me. Can I have it? Yes, but I didn't do it. Are you sure you didn't do it? It's good. No, but I'm starting to wish I had. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the singing dork. Lisa. <laughs> uh. Any other nominations? We nominate Bart Simpson. <laughs> Beach. I had a speech ready, but my dog ate it. And you see what he's got there with the little uh, triangular paper football that he's trying to flick there. Uh, I do remember that in late elementary school and in middle school being taught that little game uh, to kind of pass the time during dull moments. Uh, I have not seen that in a very long time, though. I need someone very reliable to deliver an important message to the principal's office. Would you do it for me? Why, Mrs. Krabappel, how would I know where the principal's office is? Uh, People, class what clown. I told you about encouraging him. When Bart wins approval for making a fool of himself, it makes him think that he's... Yay, Bart! Nobody of the hundreds of people... Look at him, the hanging on his words knew that a gray spider had played the most important part of all. No one was with her when she died. <laughs> Come on, Janie. Everybody has a talent. I want to see yours, that's all. I don't have a talent. You cannot talk like that. There has to be something that you can do better than anybody else. Well, I can do this. Okay. Yes, great. Okay, how about you, Ralph? One <laughs> Chuck. Oh, that's disgusting. I love it. Lisa. I used to come on, you're holding out on people this. doing that. I see a saxophone over there. I can't. Come on, Lisa. I bet you're good. No, really, I can't. Sure you can. Just try. Please don't make me do it. All right. You owe me something special. Hmm. <laughs> and one thing I thought was funny was this uh, kind of looks and sounds like a Barry sax um, and the way she's just holding it like that up off the ground with no problem for a second grader. Uh, that's pretty impressive on its own. Remember, nobody, and I mean nobody, gets got a crush on them. lunch without one igneous rock that's volcanic and one sedimentary, and that is layered. Lisa, can I see you for a minute? Yes. Yes, Mr. Bergstrom? Lisa, your homework is always so neat. How can I put this? Does your father help you with it? No. Homework's not my father's special. Well, there's no shame in it. I mean, my dad not could... Mine. Oh. You didn't let me finish. Unless the next word was burp, you didn't have to. In a sample taken in this very classroom, a state inspector found 1.74 parts per million of asbestos. That's not enough. We demand more asbestos. More asbestos. More asbestos. More asbestos. More asbestos. And I've mentioned this a couple of times before um, when I was talking about high school student body presidents or student council or a uh, homecoming, uh, things of that nature. People do all sorts of campaigning and um, usually not speech making like this, but all sorts of gifts and promises and things like that. And it really gets ridiculous, even though they don't really have too much responsibility uh, in those roles. But uh, an elementary school class president, I don't know what they would do, uh, but they sure are taking it seriously here. Hard enough! Yeah! 
I'm getting nervous. Yeah. So uh, Martin puts up a sign that says a vote, a vote for Bart is a vote for anarchy, like it's an insult. And then he <laughs> and then he puts up the same thing like, yeah, it is an anarchy. Don't you want it? Um, and, you know, there are probably some elementary school students that do uh, want that. <laughs> they just say, oh, wouldn't it be great if we just did whatever we wanted all day long at school? Never go broke appealing to the lowest common denominator. You're going to miss your brother's antics. When? When? When your life takes you places the rest of us have only heard about. Places where my intelligence will be an asset and not a liability? Yes, there is such a place. Believe me, it's true. I believe everything you say. Dear Miss Hoover, you have Lyme disease. We miss you. Kevin's biting me. Come back soon. Here's a drawing of a spirochete. Love, Ralph. Oh, that's great, Ralph. Hey, kids! I've learned that in two weeks, the Springfield Museum of Natural History will be closing forever due to a lack of interest. And that card the kid was reading is kind of funny. Um, you know, young kids do tend to write like that. <laughs> Dear Miss Hoover, you have Lyme disease. Uh, you know, kind of a get well card. Um, little kids like that are pretty direct. Good luck, lady. You're going to need it. <laughs> Mr. Bergstrom. Hi, Lisa. Hey, you don't have to pay. Read the sign. And this must be your father. Mm. His teeth had jagged edges to rip through your body, but he could have swallowed you whole. Wow. Actually, Mr. Simpson, they do know a great deal about the process of mummification. First, they pulled the brain out through the nose with an iron hook and stuffed the insides with sawdust and onions. Ew, gross. Ooh, pretty creepy. Still, I'd rather have him chasing me than the wolfman. Oh, Lord. Mr. Simpson, I'm going to be presumptuous. I have noticed that Lisa seems to feel she has no strong male role model. She said that? Well, no, she didn't say it, but, you know, she... But you can tell, right? She looks around and sees everybody else's dad with a good education, youthful looks, and a clean credit record, and thinks, why me? What did I do to deserve this bad old piece of... Mr. Simpson, <laughs> you have got to be a bigger man. There is a wonderful girl's future at stake. Well, if she's so wonderful, give her an A. I am giving her an A. Great, but don't tell her it was a favor to me. Tell her she earned it. Mr. Simpson, she did earn it. You are smooth. I'll give you that. Good morning, Lisa. Mm, teacher's back. You see, class, my Lyme disease turned out to be... <clears throat> Psychosomatic. Does that mean you're crazy? No, that means she was faking it. No, actually, it was a little of both. Sometimes when a disease is in all the magazines and on <laughs> all the news shows, it's only natural that you think you have Where's it. Mr. Bergstrom? I don't know. Yeah, and I have seen this before. I'm not so much with substitute teachers, but uh, with uh, some of the regular teachers, you know, a student will get somewhat attached to a particular teacher. And, you know... Yeah, just like any other profession, you have uh, really great teachers and teachers who struggle and everywhere in between. And then you have some that just uh, students get attached to uh, no matter where they fall on that scale. And so when they either move on to the next grade or there's some transition that happens, they uh, have trouble. So I, I can understand what Lisa is going through here. Although I'd sure like to talk to him. He didn't touch my lesson plan. <laughs> Well, what did he teach you? That life is worth living. <laughs> the polls will be open from now until the end of recess. Now, just in case any of you have decided to put any thought into this, <laughs> final statements. Martin. I don't think there's mm. anything left to say. He's not Martin. doing too it's good. Party under the slide! <laughs> Mr. Bergstrom! Uh, she went to his place. Mr. He moved out this morning. He must have a new job. He took his Copernicus costume. Do you know where I can find him? Uh, I think he's taking the next train to Capital City. A train. How like him. Traditional yet environmentally sound. Yes. And it's been the backbone of our country since Leland Stanford drove that golden spike at Promontory Point. I see he touched you too. <sighs> Hey, thanks for the vote, man. I didn't vote. Voting for Jesus. Yeah, the cupcakes. The cupcakes. Yeah. 
like I was saying, um, with high school, things like a prom queen, homecoming queen, stuff like that. I have seen a lot of this. I've seen kids show up with entire platters, uh, either homemade or catered items. Uh, it really started to get ridiculous a couple of times. So this uh, really uh, hits home for me. Well, you got that right. Thanks for your vote, girls. We forgot. Well, don't sweat it. Just so long as a couple of people did, right, Newhouse? Uh-uh. Lewis? Oh. Somebody must have voted. What about you, Bart? Didn't you vote? Uh-oh. Uh <gasps> the polls are closed. <laughs> I demand a recount. One for Martin. Two for Martin. Would you like another recount? <laughs> they didn't actually vote. One for Martin. Two for Martin. <laughs> this way, Mr. President. <laughs> uh, like the uh, Dewey defeats Truman um, news, famous newspaper shot. It's funny. Lisa. Hey, Lisa, indeed. What? What is it? Oh, I mean, we're just going to leave just like that? Oh, mm. I'm sorry, Lisa. It, you know, it's the life of, of the substitute teacher. He's abroad. <laughs> Today, he might be wearing gym shorts. Tomorrow, he's speaking French or, or, or pretending to know how to run a bandsaw or a <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about the bandsaw part, but yeah, um, what he's saying is kind of true there. So a lot of people are substitute teachers. It's a, a good job because of its flexibility. That's what a lot of people like about it. Um, there are a lot of people that do that on the side or as kind of a part time gig uh, because you get to decide when you go in. You know, you might get a call even if you get a call every day. Hey, you know, can you come in? You can just say, nah, I'm not I'm not working today. Or you can set your days. Uh, a lot of it nowadays is online. There are various third-party organizations that do substitute uh, teachers or facilitate that. And so you just sign up online and accept jobs um, online. Um, and yeah, he said one day you could be wearing gym shorts or speaking French or whatever, because there are some people that, you know, to maximize the amount of work you get, will do all grades, a kindergarten through 12th grade. And uh, there are others that will say, OK, I'm only doing elementary school or I'm only doing high school or middle school. So it really depends. But some people who do it all, they could be doing kindergarten one day and 12th grade the next day or P.E. or whatever the case may be. Uh, there's some truth to that there. Can't go. You're the best teacher I'll ever have. Oh, that's not true. Other teachers will come along. Oh, please. No, I can't buy the I am the best. But <laughs> in the project in Capital City. But I need you too. That's a problem with being middle class. Anybody who really cares will abandon you for those who need it more. I, I understand, Mr. Bergstrom. And what also comes to mind here is she says, you know, how much she wants him to be her teacher. Uh, I have seen it where a substitute teacher will come in and the students will say, you know, can you just stay? Can you be our teacher? And you know, it creates a really uncomfortable situation because the substitute teacher is like, well, I, I know I can't do that. And it's kind of embarrassing that they think I'm better than their regular teacher who is usually uh, paid a whole lot more uh, to be a permanent teacher. Sometimes kids will say that because they the substitute teacher really is good. Other times they will say that because uh, the substitute teacher allows them to do whatever they want to do. And so that's what they think a good teacher is. Um, but it's really not, but it's kind of a mix. I'm going to miss you. Mm. I'll tell you what, whenever you feel like you're alone and there's nobody you can rely on, this is all you need to know. Thank you, Mr. Bergstrom. All aboard. So I guess this is it. If you don't mind, I'll just run alongside the train as it speeds you from my life. Goodbye, Lisa, honey. It'll be okay. Just read the note. Oh, this is the worst thing 
that could ever happen to us. All right, all right. Spilt milk, spilt milk, spilt milk. What are you so mopey about? Nothing. Homer wanted them to win, but nobody actually this voted. Nice they just oh. He's gone. gave away prizes. Ever. And? I didn't think you'd understand. Hey, just because I don't care doesn't mean I don't understand. Homer. Would you have gotten any money for being class president? No. Would you have to do extra work? Yeah. And is this Martin guy going to get to do anything neat? Like throw out the first ball at the World Series? Huh? Well, no. So let the baby have his bottle. Huh? That's my motto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that kind of reminds me, um, I don't know what an elementary school class president would do uh, in the fourth grade. I think Bart is in. Um, really not sure what that person would do. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and leave the video there. That was a really uh, sweet episode with a lot of truths in it. All these Simpsons episodes have had one thing in common. They're really over the top, but they do poke fun at some things that are uh, kind of realistic and do happen in the real world. If you're enjoying this series, please consider subscribing to the channel, but I'm going to leave it right here. Uh, this has been High School Principal Reacts. Thanks for watching.